Welcome to the Gourmet Candy Maker. My name is Lynn and together we will explore the delicious world of gourmet chocolates and fine confections. I'll teach you everything I know. I'll share resources that I've found. We'll explore recipes, tips and tricks. So come on into the kitchen and let's have some fun. Today's demonstration, Tempering Pure Chocolate Made Easy, is brought to you by Cacao Lux, the online chocolate company that is organic and trade-free certified. You'll find them at www.cacaolux.com. They truly are decadence with a difference. There's three basic methods of tempering chocolate. There's the microwave method, which we're going to show you in great detail. There's also the bain-marie or water bath or double boiler method where you use hot water to melt the chocolate on your stove. And then the third method is the professional chef method where you use a tempering stone or cold marble slab. You'll often see that on the Food Channel when chefs are doing their magic. Today we're going to jump right into the basic tempering method using the microwave. That's something that I've done for 20 years. I love the microwave. It keeps my chocolate away from water which is death to chocolate, and it's very efficient and clean. The tools we'll need for tempering are a candy thermometer, a spatula, a microwave safe bowl, and one and a half pounds of premium chocolate. And you'll need that in two bowls. One will be your one pound of chocolate, and your smaller bowl will be a half pound of chocolate. We'll reserve this for seeding. Now you can either purchase your chocolate in little buttons like this, they're pure chocolate buttons, or you can purchase it in a big slab like this. This is a very small portion of a 10 pound block. If you have it like this, then you obviously need to break it into small chunks. We've done that already for time efficiency, so here we go. I'm going to put this chocolate in a microwave safe bowl. I've already tested this bowl to make sure it doesn't retain heat, which again is very um, important when you're working with chocolate. I'm going to put this bowl in the microwave for one minute. You can see that it's beginning to melt. Very, very important thing is to, as you're using a microwave, you want to evenly distribute the heat through the chunks. Don't assume because the chocolate is still in solid form that it isn't melting from the inside out because it is. So we'll return this to the microwave for another 30 seconds. We're looking for a complete melt out of all the cocoa and sugar crystals and a temperature of between 116 and 118 degrees. I use a digital thermometer. It's a very quick read very easy to read and um, it's just an excellent tool. I can see that we're only at about 98 degrees which isn't enough to melt all the cocoa and sugar crystals so back in the microwave it goes but this time we're only going to do it for about 20 seconds. It's really important to do the microwave heating process very slowly because if you try to do it all at once your chocolate is going to burn from the inside out. Once it's burned, you have to pitch it. There's no way of fixing burned chocolate. It's just beautiful. So we're at 117.5. I think we're just going to give it a go from here. Now that we know that all of our cocoa crystals and sugar crystals have completely melted out, is to reintroduce stable chocolate crystals known as the seed. I'm going to do this also in very small increments and my objective is to slowly cool my main batch back down again to between 86 and 88 degrees for milk chocolate. This was a half pound so I've used about a quarter pound and I'm going to take these chunks and you'll see first of all they melt quickly and second of all, the temperature drops equally as fast. You may be asking, why do we need to temper chocolate? Premium chocolate has a high percentage of cocoa butter. When we melt high quality chocolate to work with, the cocoa butter crystals become unstable and the delicate chemistry of the chocolate is broken. 
Untempered chocolate never hardens properly. It's dull, very grainy, and sticky. Tempering is simply the process of bringing our melted batch of chocolate back into perfect crystal balance. So our finished product is smooth, shiny, and has a nice hard snap when we break it. Stirring it or agitating it really does help the tempering process as well. I think at this point I can reintroduce or introduce a few more little pure chocolate buttons, but I don't want to do any more because we are getting down to that perfect temperature and it will take longer for these buttons to melt. So once again our goal is between 86 and 88 degrees. We still have a ways to go. This is one of those processes in gourmet candy making that just takes a little bit of time. You need to be patient, go slowly, that way your chocolate won't burn and your chocolate will be in perfect temper when you're finished. We've hit the mark. We are at 88 plus. I've done my due diligence. I've stirred my batch as it's been cooling. So now before I get into my chocolate creations, I'm going to make double sure and test this batch using a very simple method. I'm going to put a little daub on a piece of wax paper like so and put it in the refrigerator. While you're waiting for your chocolate test in your refrigerator, you may get concerned about your chocolate on the counter. What's going to happen to it? Is it going to continue to drop in temperature? Yes, it will. If you don't stir it anymore, it's not going to do much, but it will drop in temperature. If you get to a place where you think it's getting too cold, you can pop it back in the microwave, but this is very, very tedious. Five seconds, 10 seconds at the most, and you don't want to see a temperature rise of more than two degrees, okay? Our little daub of chocolate has been in the refrigerator for probably 10 minutes. What we're looking for is a nice, rich, dark outer color and a perfect hard snap. Bingo. Our chocolate is in perfect temper and we are good to go.